right. Hello, everyone. Okay, uh, I'm Kaho. Uh, it's happened more recently doing a lot of uh, like the jazz work. And of course, uh, to tonight's topic, quick one, actually, all right, the title is called What's, What's Functional Programming in JavaScript? So I think this only slide <laughs> is only just for social, not nothing, a lot of things I, I only in a one page note. Okay, actually, functional programming, right? It derives from mathematics. Uh, so you see a kind of FX, right? Looks quite similar when you do programming. It's like when you call function names and so on and so forth. And then it's like, it's just a function name. Then the round brackets inside all the arguments is similar quite uh, like to math, this stuff, okay? But I just want to speak a bit about differences, what? Happen. So JavaScript wise, we have something like arrow functions, but well, you see, if you see after the arrow, right? If you use braces, I would say that's not functional programming. It's not okay. By by right, okay. From mathematical perspective, right? Mainly, right? It's like about one one line, just one statement. It just Probably like uh, expression. So definitely, you 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 put in places. You definitely inside put a lot of statements. Each statement is like do this, do that, do this, do that, and then after that, just a return. But uh, in the functional part, right? Okay, it just only like one statement. It's implicitly return. So immediately after evaluating or like you come out of final value, automatically it returns. So usually, right, if uh, there, of course, and a lot of like other tricks of how to do uh, another thing, okay. I think it's not, not functional programming. It's, you use something like, maybe in loops, right, do, wow, and then quite, quite a lot of phrases and for whatever. Okay, exceptions is definitely there's a function called for each. It's, it's different from, say, for something in the kind is like followed such but use space but in functional programming if you use for you can use for each and then inside right is a function argument you pass it in the room because actually you, you see it like for each generally is like uh decorative okay so what else is not really like functional programming is that well you use switch if you use all the switch cases again sorry that's not functional programming let's say <laughs> flow control well i mean the the only way you can get out of here is that there's somehow like use question mark semi uh, and colons kind of ternary operators something now uh the Last thing, maybe, okay, this is one thing that if, let's say you, you make the data, you do processing or, or this, and all data actually is immutable. So you you don't really like change the state. When when you like try to add, right, you come up with new value, actually it's considered like a new object somehow. That, okay, it's also then I would say it was kind of like a uh, functional programming. So, yes. So, on the last thing you mentioned about like not using switch and if, right? In a functional programming language, there's usually something called pattern matching, which allows you to like uh, define different uh, pattern matches and then effectively have what you would do in JavaScript with a switch statement. So, how do you actually like so you're saying don't use switch statements or if statements then what is your proposal alternative well uh switch switch i think yes a bit more imperative but uh another trait is somehow there's kind of like mapping uh use of maps of somehow but uh to i uh, make a for for this session because quite quite a bit quick you know, into a bit of like functional programming, especially like those flow controls so on. So I think I uh, want to cover that beyond this session, actually. Okay. So uh, I mean, well, 
I, I already talked about error functions quite, quite commonly used, but can be easily turned into something like imperative because you just like use phrases or what. Okay, uh, so what actually there are like libraries uh, here I got two that was specially like mentioned. Uh, one, uh, actually the functional program version of the low dash. Uh, okay, the so you npm install the low dash, but you when you import right just like a uh, low dash slash fp module, then you use the fp. Another is uh, actually ramda. So these two, but of which I use low dash quite extensively rather than like lambda. But concept is almost there. I okay. So now come the very critical question because here I may want to know more about uh, demographics about how many people really like maybe curious or whatever okay between like a uh, functional programming and like those object oriented imperative so you got two spectrums one is very supportive is and the other end of the spectrum is that you're really very oppressive about the paradigm so question is for each of the paradigms functional and uh, object around oriented imperative okay how where do you actually stand in the two ends of spectrum you can stay in the middle but it means something else i find oop super oppressive and every time you mention it i kind of like get really sad okay okay for for each for each right please uh, try to explain or give your opinion to you uh, no, separate, separate, please. Yeah, because cause like, yeah, imperative programming and object-oriented programming are different. Uh, okay. So you want to treat imperative, just so so don't, not talk about object-oriented because I think you can still use uh, functional in object-oriented. Okay, so it's functional against imperative. How do you want to collect these votes? Like, what, how's this going to work? Like, I mean, I, I, my, I've only got a hand up and down. I've got it's like a, a bull. Okay, okay. Uh, each. Uh, I think we randomly select each person and explain. Yes or no? Okay. We start from functional first. Who very supportive or not? Yeah. <laughs> well, how about the other end of spectrum? Imperative. Who? <laughs> okay. How about being oppressive about functional programming? No, no. Uh, it's not oppressive at all. Oh. Advocate for functional. A lot of people who advocate for functional programming um, are not not uh, necessarily pragmatic. I think a lot a lot of the time when people are pushing for functional programming solutions, it's more about some kind of idealized purity rather than hey, I just need to get some stuff done. If I want to throw in an if statement here, so what? You know, like so. And I think this is one thing I I personally like about JavaScript is the fact that it allows you to do kind of a mix of both. When when you have a task when you uh, and you want to break out of the the pure functional um, paradigm, you can do so um, for either pra um, practical uh, purposes. You need to get stuff done fast, or the computer needs to get stuff done fast. Sometimes functional programming um, uh, isn't the the fastest ap approach, um, <coughs> unfortunately. <laughs> well, it's, uh, actually, it's also down to the skills of how people like really learn about functional programming so actually i mean how how many of you actually have really like no i no idea it's like this is your first time you heard about functional programming any first time that you heard about functional programming has anyone used functional programming i mean just no just like a pool in general you know i know <laughs> I mean, first of all, uh, remember, you, 
anyone use arrow functions with all the braces? Me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, because, well, but right, if you use arrow functions with rounded brackets, I'm going to tell you that one is really another form of functional program. Yeah. This is a friendly debate, you know, it's insightful, you have your opinion, and we all do disagree on different ways of using it. Like, I'm fine with curly braces. Yeah. Because I'm going to do something in it. Okay. Well, uh, okay, okay. It, I think for one point is that uh, functional, there are tricks actually, right, in, in terms that you can actually have like multiple, we, we call it multiple line of statements. It's not, not like purely say that I want to have like just one single line. It's just that you make out a... Uh, yes, yes. Uh, JavaScript. Right. It's just that maybe you, because I, it, it's just just literal meaning. Say that if you use braces, the chances are you are just like uh, coding like do this, do that, or somehow. And and then okay, uh, actually, you see it from mathematical point of view also, right? Because this FX, right? Your your x is actually your input. They always return. They always have output. It's not, not like saying a, it's a white function, or, although, I mean, truth to form, you can actually return, return nothing in functional programming. Like, say you return a unit, actually, it's, inside is really nothing. <coughs> so, so, like, examples be for each, right? The for each function. Then, that's uh, definitely, you, you don't return any, anything at all. Uh, generally, okay, when it comes to functional paradigm, okay, here's what I have a few points, but definitely what some other people say is one of which is talking about uh, parallel and concurrent programming, really. <laughs> because it's like we're, we're, we're just passing functions and arguments here, there. And then uh, there's also like abstraction over data and abstraction over behavior. Whereas, uh, in print brief may not be saying we, we just try to abstract behavior. So, um, pattern matching, right? So, how do you propose an alternative to switch or if statements like control flow without pattern matching? Because you can't do that in JS. <laughs> okay, objects. Yeah. With the object thing, then you're constrained to using strings as well. So, uh, or you could use 
you can map like this. Oh, you you can map, yeah. but then you run into too much terrain, and then you don't get that big uh terrain thing. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully you can survive it, and you don't get hit by it. You aren't bumped over. Yeah. yeah. You're not getting actually out of it, right? Like, yeah. Well, what's the benefit? Like, what's the point of it, right? Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's Uh, yes. Before I forget about it, yes, there's one more thing that I think maybe you might need to consider is I think performance. So using the same code written using functional and using a another paradigm, if you have a really long like a array to go through, like well, the, which one is actually faster, you might want to use one instead of the other. Yeah, I, I saw some article about them uh, comparing some uh, JavaScript functions using filter and using the for loop. And then they found that the for loop was actually much faster. I, I, yeah, I need to go and find, find the article. I can't remember was it for loop or something, but it's, yeah. Yes, but it's not the breaking thing. It was, they went through the whole thing, yeah. Any more opinions? Yeah, I, I usually go with whatever, uh, whatever is the fewest lines of code or whatever is easiest for other people to understand, and then I'll use whichever paradigm. Uh, I think the reason people talk about functional programming these days is because at the turn of the century, we'd all been using imperative languages, and everyone, and not enough people were using functional. But I think in the JavaScript world, we're, we're seeing a lot of functional stuff, so we're quite lucky. And occasionally we have to pull the other way. I mean, yeah, what, what you said just reminded me of the, uh, the fact that um, let's not forget uh, one of the main things that makes a language functional. It's not the only thing, but it's one of the most important things is that you can pass around a function as a first class. Uh, like a primitive, right? It, it's not like, um, I think, like basic, for example, or, and, and many others. Uh, the function is like lexically where it is and it can never be passed somewhere else. Um, and, and that's one of the great things. Like a lot of us are doing some aspects of functional programming without even thinking about it, just by virtue of the fact that you can pass around a function. I have a, a question that may be dumb, but I don't mind. So assuming uh, functional programming up to a degree of reasonable functional programming, trying to not mutate the code everywhere, um, any function should have a return statement in functional programming. 
Otherwise, it, there's some stuff somewhere else that you are not controlling. Just checking, making sure. Any function in functional programming does have a return statement. Yeah. But actually, it's an implicit return. It's not explicit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But technically, technically, you say can return return unit, which is actually nothing at all. I don't. I don't think it's possible to like enforce that. <coughs> yeah, th I think that's not the point of JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to enforce stuff. <laughs> <laughs>